Today, I'm going to describe a specific protocol that serves as a general template that anyone, in fact, everyone can use in order to maximize all aspects of fitness, endurance, strength, flexibility, hypertrophy, aesthetic changes, etc. This foundational template of fitness is something that I personally use for over three decades. The thing about the schedule that I like so much is that you have some health lab. In this foundational protocol for fitness, what you'll notice is that on any one given day, you're going to focus on one particular aspect of fitness. Maybe it's endurance, maybe it's strength, maybe it's hypertrophy. That said, across the entire week, it's designed to bring fitness and different forms of fitness to all aspects of your body. So this particular protocol begins on Sunday, although that's simply the day that I happen to begin the protocol. And again, this protocol is not important because it's the one that I follow. I follow it because it is important. This fitness protocol is really about you. I just may refer to it as the one that I follow um, simply for ease of communication. And for me, my week begins on Sunday. So I do my very best to get a workout in on Sunday. And for me, that workout is that of a endurance workout. It's designed to either maintain or increase my endurance. And the endurance type that I'm referring to is endurance of 30 minutes or more. In fact, for me, the goal is always to get either 60 to 75 minutes of jogging. So this would be so-called zone two cardio. Zone two cardio is the kind of cardiovascular exercise in which you're pushing yourself to move such that you're breathing faster than normal. Your heart is beating faster than normal. However, you are still able to sustain a conversation but if you were to push yourself any harder, that is move faster or go up a steeper incline at the same rate you happen to be at any one moment, you would lose that ability to speak. You wouldn't be able to complete sentences. You would be out of breath or you'd have to pause mid-sentence. Now, it's near impossible, even with a heart rate monitor, to stay exactly in zone two unless you're very, very skilled at that. So I don't obsess over that. And in fact, I don't wear a heart rate monitor when I do this exercise. But for me, the goal is to head out on Sunday and get 60 to 75 minutes of jogging in zone two. Now, of course, I like to jog, but that doesn't mean that you have to jog. You could replace jogging with rowing on a rowing machine, or maybe even rowing an actual boat if you have access to that, or cycling or swimming, something that allows you continuous movement for 60 to 75 minutes at that zone two threshold. Okay, so then Monday rolls around and I like most everyone else out there, I work on Monday. However, I make sure that at some point on Monday, and for me that some point is typically and ideally early in the morning, so 7 a.m. or so, I train my legs on Monday. So that includes quadriceps, hamstrings, and calves. Why do I do that workout on Monday and what is that workout designed to do? Well, that workout is really designed to make sure that I'm either maintaining or building strength in my legs. And this is not simply for aesthetic reasons. This is not simply to grow bigger calves or grow bigger quadriceps and hamstrings, although it can accomplish that as well, depending on how you train. We'll talk about details of training. The reason for training legs on Monday is several fold. First of all, they are the largest muscle groups of the body. And by training your legs on Monday, it sets in motion a large number of metabolic processes that carry you some distance, even through the whole week in terms of elevating metabolism, in terms of amplifying certain hormonal events in your body, et cetera, that are really beneficial. In addition to that, I'm of the belief that the legs are the foundation of the body and provided you can train legs safely, that training legs is vitally important, not just for strength of the legs, but also for strength of your entire body. So for me, Monday is leg workout. It also just feels good to get the leg workout out of the way early in the week. And it accomplishes another goal, which is that I sometimes will take one or two days off of a leg workout because they can be very intense and they are large muscle groups. And I'll explain what I do on the off days. They're not pure off days. With all that said, I like to take Tuesday as a no endurance, no resistance training day. But that doesn't mean that I'm not doing anything for my overall health and fitness. On Tuesdays, I do a series of heat cold contrast. In other words, I get really, really warm and then I get really, really cold. I get really, really warm and I get really, really cold repeatedly. And the way I do that is by getting into a hot sauna. So for me, that's really hot, but I've built up my heat conditioning. So please don't do this unless you've built up your uh, ability to withstand heat. And I'll get in for about 20 minutes 
sometimes 15, but usually 20 minutes. Then I get out and then I will get into an ice bath or a cold water bath that's about 45 to 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Again, don't get into water that's so cold that you go into shock. I'll explain what a good cold um, stimulus could be for you and how to determine that. Or if I don't have access to my sauna and my ice bath, what I can do if I'm traveling is I will take a hot bath and then alternate with cold shower, hot bath, cold shower. For me, this is heat, cold contrast. And really what this day is about is two things. First of all, I'm trying to accelerate recovery from the leg workout I did previously. I will do anywhere from three to five rounds, which is a lot, anywhere from three to five rounds of heat for about 20 minutes and cold for about five minutes. How cold should the cold be? Here's a general rule of thumb. It should be cold enough that you really want to get out, but not so cold that it's unsafe. And that will vary from person to person. So I cannot give you a, per, a simple prescriptive there. Same thing with the heat. Hot enough that you're sweating and that you want to get out, but not so hot that you're running the risk of injuring yourself or killing yourself. And again, that will vary from person to person. So you have to build up slowly, be careful and build up empirically. I do that on Tuesdays, again, as a way to accelerate recovery. And because it's very clear that their cardiovascular benefits, maybe even benefits for the brain related to the cardiovascular benefits. That brings us to Wednesday. And on Wednesday, we get back to a resistance training workout. And the resistance training workout that I emphasize on Wednesday is one in which you train your torso. Yes, literally your torso. But in any case, this is not about training chest or back or shoulders. In fact, it's really about strengthening the muscles of the torso. And of course, includes the chest and the shoulders and the back. And I'm sure as I say this, a number of people out there who are obsessed with hypertrophy and muscle growth and filling out their shirts or whatever it may be are thinking, oh no, you know, this is just kind of all around fitness. But no, the point is on Wednesday, you train your torso and that's going to involve some pushing. So that's good for you. That might include some training of things like bench presses or incline presses, as well as shoulder presses or lateral raises, things for the shoulders, as well as for the back, some pulling exercises. These could be bent over rows or chin ups or pull ups. Again, there are an enormous number of exercise for each and every one of these muscle groups. I want to be strong in not just my legs, but my upper body. I also may want, may want to engage some hypertrophy, to grow certain muscle groups in order to create a sense of balance. That could be for aesthetic reasons, but also for balancing strength and for health of the, and the integrity of the joints, etc. And in addition to that, by training a bunch of different muscle groups together, you have the opportunity to get the more systemic hormonal effects and metabolic effects that occur when you're not just training one muscle group and isolating that one muscle group, but rather training a bunch of muscle groups together. So Wednesday, I train torso and I do that in push-pull fashion just for um, kind of time efficiency. And then comes Thursday and that means another cardiovascular exercise session, although it's a brief one. Unlike the endurance training on Sunday, the cardiovascular session on Thursday, and again, for me, it falls on Thursday, but for you, it could fall on a different day, depending on when you started this protocol, is going to be about, again, about 35 minutes of, for me, running, although it could be rowing or it could be cycling, it could be something of that sort. The goal of this workout is what's important. The goal of this workout is to get into that range of endurance where your heart rate is elevated quite a bit more than zone two, but that you're not really going all out sprint. So what that means for me is warming up for about five to 10 minutes. That could be jogging, a little bit of light calisthenics, might even be hopping on a stationary bike, although to be honest, I loathe the stationary bike. And then setting a timer and doing about 30, but ideally 35 minutes of what I call 75 to 80% of all out. But when I think of all out sprint, I think of 100%. And what is that? In my mind, that's somebody is chasing me with a needle full of poison and I am sprinting away at maximal speed. That for me is 100%. So after a brief warm up, what I'm going to do is go out and move, run for about 30 to 35 minutes at about 75 or 80% of that all out. What that means is that I'm striving to keep a steady pace, but in reality, I don't. Okay, so with that Thursday cardiovascular let's call it endurance, but cardiovascular training workout done around rolls Friday. And on Friday, I'm going to do another cardiovascular training session. And I alluded to this earlier, but this cardiovascular training session is also designed to strength and hypertrophy increases for the legs. Because remember, we train legs on Monday. Friday is high intensity interval training, and that can take a variety of different forms. For me, the ideal thing to do for me what I'm trying to do on Friday is get my heart rate way, way up. In addition, 
to the benefits of getting 180 to 200 minutes of zone two cardio per week minimum. It's a really good idea to get up to that max or near max heart rate at least once a week. And you're not gonna do that for very long periods of time. You're not gonna do that for 30 minutes. You can't sprint all out for 30 minutes unless you're Steve Prefontaine. These high intensity interval training for me, ideally would be on the so-called assault bike or airdyne bike. So these are bikes that have the fan, which um, might seem like, oh, you know, it just cools you off, but actually there's a lot of resistance there. So what I'll, I will typically do is a 20 to 30 second all out sprint using arms and legs and then 10 seconds rest and then repeat all out sprint for 20 to 30 seconds, 10 seconds rest, repeat. And I'll do that for anywhere from eight to 12 rounds. What I'm trying to do is get to that point where I quote unquote, feel like I want to die. Now I don't want to die and please don't die, right? If you're not in good cardiovascular health, do not just jump right into this fitness protocol. But I wanna to get to the point where I really feel like I could not pedal any faster or pull any faster on the, on the assault bike, the airdyne bike. And Saturday is when you train arms, calves, and neck. I suggest doing some sort of dip movement. And certainly the dip is a great exercise to hit multiple muscle groups, it, chest, shoulders, and triceps, uh, maybe even some back to some extent, depending on how you do it. So doing some dipping movement will indirectly stimulate strength, hypertrophy, et cetera, in the chest and shoulders and including some sort of pulling movement for the bicep, like a chin up or palms facing movement, pulling up from, to the bar, especially if it's a close grip type movement, but even if it's a wide grip type movement, will of course trigger strength and hypertrophy maintenance or improvements in the biceps, but will also trigger strength hypertrophy in the lats, in the back. Okay, so Saturday is this arm workout. Might be your sort of classic dumbbell curls for the bicep and maybe incline curl for the bicep because it has more of a stretch, so on an incline bench. And then you might finish with two sets of chin-ups, so palms facing you, chin-ups or three sets of chin-ups, depending on whether or not you're in a heavier load month or a, le or a more moderate weight month. So we've completed the total arc across the week and we can summarize it as saying Sunday, is, let's just say long endurance. Monday is leg resistance training. Tuesday, heat cold contrast. Wednesday, torso training plus neck. Thursday, I would call it moderate intensity cardiovascular exercise. So that 35 minute moderate intensity cardiovascular exercise. Friday, high intensity interval training of sprinting or some uh, variation thereof. And Saturday, arms, calves, neck, and torso indirect work. That's the total structure. But I want to emphasize again, you do not need to start this on Sunday. That the thing about the schedule that I like so much and that I do believe that will benefit you as well is that you have some flexibility there. 